God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
Almighty Father, who has given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written. The fifth chapter of the first epistle of Blessed St. John, Apostle, beginning at the fourth verse. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear witness, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. This is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Here in a big
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, the doors were shut so the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. When he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, and being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us man and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I do welcome you on this first Sunday after Easter. A few announcements to make. First is our Anglican Church Women, our ACW, sponsors a World Child, World Vision Child in Bangladesh. And we are there. We are her parent in a sense. Also, Chico's, Chico's Women's Resource Clinic. And so you can join in either of those gifts annually at $5 a month or $60 a year or both for just double the amount. It's cheaper than going to Starbucks, frankly. So, and it's better for you. Now, you can see my wife, Geeti, about that, and she's happy to take your contributions. Today is the final day of our ACW Seeking Your spe Special Gifts now to aid in a 60-bed field hospital that's put up by Samaritan's Purse in Ukraine near Kyiv. So, um, now that we can pronounce Ukraine and Kyiv together, we can also support a hospital that's there uh, today. If you want to give your gift today, otherwise, if you want to keep giving to that, do it directly. You can certainly do that online with the, the organization. But we'll put it together as a single wonderful gift. Our annual synod of the Diocese of the Western States is coming up very soon, May 10th uh, in Reading. It begins the, the uh, events. And so our delegates have been chosen. We will go there representing this parish. Uh, there are some things you can participate in, even as those who 
don't leave, don't go there. But there are drawings. Uh, there are there uh, several packets of pictures for you to look at. Uh, the one that's several pages uh, long is uh, very many different wonderful gifts given by people throughout the diocese for an auction. You, uh, not an auction, but a uh, you you get to have a drawing. So you get to buy tickets. The tickets are there. They are blue. Uh, the instructions are on those sheets there. Read it and put your money in the little gray basket and also the ticket stubs. You're gonna get these double tickets, these duplex tickets. On one of them, you put your name, you give that bucket that name, name the other you keep uh, for yourself. And uh, that proves your, make sure you're identified on that back by that other ticket. And we will, as delegates, go up there and take those with us. They will go into the drawing. You have as much chance as anybody else and we'll bring back the gift for you. So look those over. There's also another uh, set of drawings that are for uh, wonderful stoles and dalmatic, which are investments for a deacon. So look those over and see if you want to uh, do something for deacon faith today, uh, if you'd like to have that. Anyway, uh, we can make sure that that's given to a good home. Uh, so do that. The red ones are for those, and the red tickets are for a different price. Then there's some pictures on one sheet, not to confuse you too badly, but you will go online. There's a silent auction that uh, will go on until it's done and the address is there for you to look at. Uh, these all go to funding various things, but basically they go to set up a fund whereby we can bring people to Synod who can't afford to otherwise. So be generous and thank you for that. Finally, there are a lot of spaces in our hallway out there for flowers for the altar that have not yet had signups. So if you want to get take a quick glance at the flower sheet as you go on by to your wonderful coffee hour today, and you will see a place there for you. Uh, our coffee hour today, or refreshment hour, is going to be a special Persian meal that is a joint venture between Clarice and Giti and Mahnaz. It's a Persian uh, special, very, very good um, uh, rice and sauce that uh, Persians make for very special events. It's a special event. Go downstairs and have some. Don't go away without a Persian meal today. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Let's now sing hymn number 99. <laughs>
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Our liturgical final blessing quotes St. Paul in the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It offers you peace, peace to be still and at the heart of all things, peace to be with God, to possess and exude peace of mind, peace between all who love peace. That kind of blessed peace is not easy to find. It always costs somebody. I was born in the year 1949, three years after World War II had ended. I felt that that war's shadows most of my childhood. There were combat movies galore that recounted the dramas of life and death situations, of having a real enemy, depicting true evil and the human struggle to oppose it. In our playgrounds, we were GIs fighting the Germans or Japanese. The world that I was born into had seen D-Day, the Battle of the Bulge, Pearl Harbor, and Okinawa. America didn't commiserate its battle dead. Rather, it celebrated victory. We had saved the world, and the blessings of peace were upon us if only briefly. Korea reminded us that peace was transient. With one enemy out of the way, we could always have another. America later celebrated the fall of the communism's Soviet bloc as though we'd never face another world-stopping evil. That sense of relief lasted just 12 years until 9-11 in 2001. Peace is hard to keep. Sometimes it takes a war. Sometimes the war brings no peace at all. The US is not at war right now, but I would hardly say we are at peace, would you? We feel wars around us, heating up in the quest for superiority, but almost always in other hand, other lands on other shores. But what if it were here? Some countries' children are born in embattled cities and live under the threats of war in their streets all their lives long. Being born in constant danger, death, and enmity, that's hard to imagine. It's brutalizing to the human soul and psyche. In parts of Africa and the Mideast, children have lived in warfare from infancy to middle age. They can't imagine peace. In a very real sense, our children grow up now surrounded by relative peace and calm in a world they can trust. We may not appreciate that. But spiritually, are we at war? We're not always conscious of it. We don't talk or think about it. We sense vaguely that even in our sleep, there is a battle going on. An enemy stalks us wants to take us prisoner. He wants our children, our marriages, our minds and hearts to obey his desires. He studies our weaknesses. He employs psychological warfare, terror, false treaties that promise peace but yield oppression. In the spiritual realm, we've never known peace. It's been on all of our lives. What makes us vulnerable is a rift between our hearts and God. We feel like traitors sometimes. We have betrayed him and broken that peace ourselves. The enemy may press us, but we may fear God to be a fiercer enemy himself. Jesus defeated our true enemy, and he won peace with God for us. He did it through his pain and loss, a cross and passion worse than any battlefield. It was the good war, one clearly pitting all good against evil. And he won 
through defeat. His resurrection was a final victory over death and hell. Having won, he sought to give that victory to us. That very night, he did it. Peace be unto you. Standing before the astonished apostles, he showed them his wounds. Why? His wounds had bought our peace. His scars were testimonials of war. And his bright life was proof that the peace had been won. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. This peace was for everybody, and Jesus gave power to his apostles. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. He gave them life-giving power to forgive. Jesus' breath ordained them to a ministry of reconciliation. God originally made man's body, but then he breathed into him life. Jesus used his breath to impart life-giving forgiveness. God's breath gave life, and Jesus' breath restored that life to us again. We look for temporal peace, comfortable lives, our kids grown up in healthy and productive families. We may look even forward to retired living, taking trips, growing roses. But our kids are vulnerable. Our marriages, not always havens of peace. Our health won't last. Friends fail us. The enemy of our souls still strikes at the very heart of our peace. Remember that the cross of Jesus wins the battle of humanity and wins our own personal struggles, sorrows, and shame. Our hearts must be certain of that, our minds fixed upon it. It's the Lord or it's total war. Didn't he assure us, in me, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. So we come here to church in order to find peace in a world that wars against our children through drugs, immoral behavior, and vicious lies. War is whipped up between races, between sexes, between people of different faiths. And we are at war in our hearts. That's why today we come here to God's altar and at the knees of Jesus, who won an eternal peace through his most generous sacrifice. I have stood in the falling snow at the Arlington National Cemetery, watching the changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldiers. The dead under the ground in that place are all at peace. Their combat is over. Through their sacrifice, we live in a land of freedom of relative peace, maintaining what Jesus Jefferson called our inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These rights were not passed into law by Congress or enacted through executive order of the White House, nor were they granted by decision of our Supreme Court justices. We are endowed by our creator with those rights. But the declaration also indicates that such rights may be infringed and good governments must rise from humanity to ensure their constancy. No other government deserves to stand. At the founding of our nation, one with sacrifice and a terrible risk, they were clearly conscious that we sought a peace on our borders of our own and within our borders, peace through victory against England and peace by establishing the kingdom of heaven with Christ as our one true sovereign. These dual battlefields of a temporary, temporal war and a spiritual one were both felt and waged by true men and women of faith. That's what you feel in your chest at the Star Spangled Banner. We don't worship the flag, but a republic for which it stands which is one nation under God. Jesus breathed on them, receive ye the Holy Ghost, he said. 
It was an ordination, an empowerment. In less than two months, he would be at his father's right hand. And together they would send that Holy Spirit, God's third divine person, in a new way to earth. He was meant for every believer in Christ. He was given through several sacraments. And by our faith, he is received. And why do we need this gift? What is our benefit in having God's third person inside here? God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The three persons are all fully God, one God united in a single power and holy will. Within that unity, a sequence of authority flows down from the Father through the Son and to the Spirit. When we, the people of God, stand under that authority by our faith, by our recitation of the creed, by our obedience to him, by our radical identification with the Son of God incarnate, then that power flows down into and through us. The power of God is for us and is in us and is for others. When Christ blew his breath on the apostles, it wasn't yet Pentecost, but it was the beginning of a new relationship with the Spirit of God. They were being elevated and commissioned to go in his name. Even so, send I you. God's truth, God's blessing, God's forgiveness, God's peace on earth are all features of that ministry of which we all partake and all must transmit to others such as we can. The war ongoing between heaven and hell, between our spiritual enemy and ourselves, is not supposed to rage between you and me, between racial colors, between political parties, between young and old. We've been granted peace at a holy cost, and by this price we've been won. Peace is the result. And peace we must bring out by faith, by love, by forgiveness. Forgiveness, is that possible? Palestine and Israel can't stop the endless warfare because neither side can come to or express forgiveness. Someone always wants war. But the nations we defeated in World War II went on to benefit from the ensuing peace because our nation determined to rebuild theirs, to feed their starving millions, to invest in their industries, and to forgive them for trying to destroy us. Nelson Mandela left 27 years of prison in South Africa to be elected the first post-apartheid president, the first black leader of a land long divided by race. He wouldn't listen to voices of racial recrimination categorically forgave the white population and joined the two races in co-governing rules. Through forgiveness, he won the peace. Three bear witness, says St. John, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Now we don't know all he means by this, but surely the spirit of God enters by the waters of our baptisms and transforms our dead spirits to live again. Christ's blood is shed for our forgiveness, and we receive him at this rail. It's powerful and precious. It's all given to us, not earned, and is ours by God's grace. We have nothing but what has been given to us from above, and nothing will last but that holy relationship. And in that joining together of heaven and earth, we learn peace. For peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In peace or in war, may our hearts reside in him, the author of peace. And may the peace of God that passeth understanding reside in you and remain with you always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
and for all, and for Brett and Laura, and for all terrorists to turn back to God's heart for us, for the life of Christ. We pray for God's guidance for John and his family, Spencer, Eric, for Donald, Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, Andrew, Angela, Derek, Janice, and James. With special intentions, we pray that there be no fires this year, despite the lack of rain, that it will not be a fire here. Please. We also pray for the Muslims throughout the world here, including this week, the uh, month of Ramadan, their 30 days of fasting and prayer where they seek the face of God. We agree and want them to see God as he is and find him in the face of Jesus Christ. Also, we pray for Jamal and his family, Randy and his family, Mooney, Jolie, and Thomas. For Gogi's Cafe and the Sovereign Joy Church, both here with us at this moment. For fire, police, EMS, dispatch workers, that they may serve safely and with honor. We pray for America's return to Christ. For our Iran mission, which is right now airing our programs for the 11th season over Iran. For Women's Resource Fund, COVID 19 recovery throughout the world, and we may stay, we may be able to keep it. Uh, Butte County has gone from purple to red to orange to yellow in about a month. Uh, so that, those are good things, I guess. The colors are nice, anyway. Uh, and it means it's not that bad. May it stay not bad. We pray for the rain season not to end until we have sufficient rain for our crops and the safety of our land. We pray for those of Afghanistan and Ukraine, people suffering under violence and oppression. Help them. God may help them and bless them and save life. We pray for all of God's purpose and done in us and through us as He wills. And for the parishes of St. Mark's and St. Bartholomew's up north of here, both seeking a priest. We pray for those in our service, especially Gavin Reese, Douglas, and Sebastian. And for all travelers, especially Jamal and Robin and Eric and um, our Italian and his mother Joan. Uh, they are all traveling. We pray for our children and youth, especially of St. Augustine's, the province of Christ the King, and for all students worldwide. Students are winding up their last month of training right now, so we pray for them to do well, learn deeply, and make, take benefit of this for all those who teach as well. We pray for all those who um, have a birthday, so let's see, Alan and Jamal are. Birthdays this week for anybody we should have a, as a person to know Mark is going to come back. So you want to we'll wait for him to come back. We did it before. We did it already? Yeah. We can bless them. No, that's double cross. <laughs> <laughs> can't double cross me. Uh, okay. Alec right. is our nephew, we just turned 21 yesterday. All right. My brother's son. Oh, cool. Christopher Paul's our son. He's going to be with us this week. Yeah, in town. Yeah. All right. So we do pray for those for the birthdays. Watch over thy children, the Lord. As their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted in the world. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth all understanding. Abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. I should have mentioned that I will mention now Charlie Malin and Janice Silva, who's a couple of days off on her birthday. Uh, yeah. But uh, Charlene just turned 92 or three. She's still getting along. She's doing good. All right, we do pray for those of Christian marriage. Are there any anniversaries to be blessed? Will we give thanksgiving for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Indeed, when he came and breathed on them and said, Forgiveness is your mission. Go do it. That's the gospel. We are forgiven. And he did it. He won it by his sacrifice. And he gave us the fruits of that through his ministry. And we are all, therefore, empowered to forgive at the very least and to love for sure. So we pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God and by the Holy Apostle, has taught us to make prayers and supplications and we give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully. 
to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer to thy divine majesty. We seek to me to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and comfort. Grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and with the unity of God the Lord. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness of vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John our Archbishop, and uh, Donald and Scott our Bishop, and other ministers, especially Brian P. that they may both live in life and God and set forth thy true and life of good, and rightly and duly administer that holy sacraments. To all thy people give their heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, here present, that with the meek heart and be reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word. Truly serving me in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless the holy name for all their service and part of this life in that great fear. Beseech thee to grant them continual growth in my love and service, and to give us grace out of all the good examples that with them. We may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ, the Son, our only mediator, Lord, and Advent. He who truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly me. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge you for your part in the sins and weakness, which we have not assigned to us to be sin by the Lord, by God, who are your being, against thy divine majesty, provoking us stress to be like God. We learn to see that the Lord is sorry for the sins the remembrance of them is the sins of things, the burden of them is the tongue of them, and mercy is not on us, but mercy is upon us, so is mercy for all of them. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all of his acts, and grant that we may serve the peace of the kings of life, beyond the glory of them, for Jesus Christ, so that is. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, with his great mercy and promise forgiveness to send to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith in our name. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear our comfortable words, our Savior Christ, said unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail, and our heavenly nation, and full of friendship. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to be happy with all who believe. Should not perish but have the last one. You're also the same also. This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received in Christ Jesus to the world to save sinners. You're also what St. John said to make that sin you have an Adam with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he gives propitiation for all our sins. Uh, our Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, live not your hearts, we live them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is Jesus Christ, our Lord, for 
He is the very best of man, which was offered for us, and had taken away the sin of the world, who by his death had destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. <laughs> Savior Jesus Christ, holy and complete, members of the death of flesh. May be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire that Father who could mercifully accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech me to grant that by the merits of death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain permission of our sin and all other benefits. Passion. Here we are to present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Come to be seen. 
we and all others shall be partakers of this holy communion. The word will receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Be one body with him that we may be well us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and thy babies who have gone before us with the sign of faith in our grasp to the sleep of peace. With these alone to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of life, and of peace. And although we are unworthy to our manifold sins to offer thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our common human service, not weighing our merits, but according to our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by him, with the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee.
Behold, the Lamb of God, behold, the man who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but I see the word I will lay upon the soul of the Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but I see the word I will lay upon my soul of the Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but I see the word I will lay upon my soul of the Preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life.
I'll be heading back uh, Tuesday. Should be back Wednesday afternoon. Okay, we're still on the recording. I'm going to unrecord, but. Uh...